Hey guys, uh, what is going on? Welcome to The Camera Adds 10 Pounds. I am your host, Peter Sears. Uh, I'm a comedian most of the time, and I'm a good guy some of the time. Um, and today I have a special guest. Uh, you guys are going to love this person as much as I do. Um, she is, I've known her for a while, but um, well, wait, if someone actually, here, we'll do this. I probably should have done this beforehand, but like, if someone asked you what you did, what would you say? What, what, would you, what do you identify as? Like my job? Yeah. I mean, I, I, man I manage you. <laughs> I manage yeah. a fitness studio. Um, I. But you're like a nutritionist and. Yeah, but seeing that I just finished school, I don't necessarily just like say that off the bat. Okay. Uh, I don't know. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but she's, <laughs> she's, but, but Ashley, uh, Ashley O'Shea anyway is my guest. Ashley O'Shea. Um, and it's spelled. A S H L E A H because she's Irish, hence the last name O'Shea. But not really. The whole ancestry.com right. thing course. fucked us up. So Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not real I don't think my last name is actually what it is. I think that they changed it when whoever some point I haven't done the whole thing, mm -hmm. but at some point somebody came over and I don't think my last name is actually my last name. Okay. I told you what mine's supposed to be, right? No, I don't think so. It's supposed to be Rawls guy, which is Croatian. Oh, that's weird. So That's yeah. not even close to O'Shea at all. Not at all. And my brother's name is Shawn Michael O'Shea, so super Irish. Shawn Michael, like the heartbreak kid. Is that the name? He's cute. He's sexy. <laughs> oh you got the God. look. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about, right, Paul? No He's a wrestler. Idea. No? Okay. Uh -uh. You don't know the wrestler, Shawn Michaels? No. Sorry. Out of all the things that you know, you don't know any professional wrestlers? N nope. Are you serious? No. I was never, that was never my thing. But you have like dad and like. He was never like into wrestling. Did you have a brother? Did you have like a brother too? Nope. He was no? not. It, uh -huh. <laughs> he was in. He was okay. a mountain biker. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay, so I actually uh, I, I wanted to bring you in for a number of reasons, um, but one of the reasons I know is that you're super. You just like a, you you just finished school, um, but you're very much into like nutrition. Um, you're you're like a passive vegan also. <laughs> Is that a label? I don't know. Uh, I mean, because you're not like, you don't, like, you know how, like, vegans annoy the hell out of most people, and they, right, like, right. just talk about being it's like vegan a known thing. all the time. Like, you're like, oh, like, your eyes are pretty. You're like, yeah, well, you know, since I'm vegan, my eyes are blue. You're like, well, it doesn't even mean anything. Right. Like, they just, they always find it. It's kind of like, a, for me, I always felt like, a, like, when I was single, um, if I was, like, interested in a girl, I would never ask her if she had a boyfriend, okay. um, not because I'm an asshole, but I just always felt like if she wanted me to know that she had a boyfriend, she would tell me. Like right. she would just, we, I would just be talking like, oh, how was your weekend? And they'd be like, oh, I went to the beach. Da -da -da -da. And then my boyfriend and I had, you're like, okay, she wants to know if she has a boyfriend. Okay, cool. But if they didn't want you to know, they would fail to mention the fact that they had a boyfriend. So you're like, okay, well, cool. Um, so like with vegans, they want you to fucking know that they're vegans, like they will <laughs> tell you in every okay. sentence and every like part of their lives, like their their social media bio, like everything is vegan, vegan, and it's like okay, we get it, dude. So, but you're not like that. No, I'm not like that. But you're. Thank you. Like I said, <laughs> but you're but you're like a passive vegan. I mean, I was yeah, I was raised vegetarian. Um, it wasn't really something that was thought of in my family. Not until I'd say the last couple years has it become something that's um, more of a environmental thing and just an animal welfare thing for me. Uh -huh. um, but before that, I'd always say it's a texture thing. I maybe had like two or three bites of steak my entire life. Uh -huh. I don't, it's not appealing to me. Um, my dad was actually raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma on like steak and potatoes. And Hello, shout out to Oklahoma. Yeah, there we go. Hi, I Ashton. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I th he came out to Santa Barbara to UCSB in the 70s and he said he was just in heaven and with all the health food stores and even back then? Even back then, he said he was never a meat eater. It just, it always made him feel sick, he remembered. Huh. Um, so I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I ate chicken sometimes growing up, but we never, ever had steak in our house. We never had soft drinks. I think the only cereal we had was Cheerios, like the plain Cheerios. Um, like the, the wick kind? And granola. The, the, kind, the, wick. the kind that you get when you're on wick. <laughs> you get Cheerios, Kicks, and fucking cornflakes. 
Oh, but what about Crispix though? Crispix are good. I don't know if those come with Wix though. Oh yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't. But I also don't know because I've never been on Wix before. <laughs> but I lived in a well neighborhood where a lot of people. Pretty sure were. it stands for women and children, right? So you would. Wait, right? is that what it st stands for? Wic is yeah, it's a like women and children thing. But then, but like, food what's the I? What does the I stand for? I don't know. Oh, are we, are we googling? Yeah, dude. Right. I want to know what this fucking means. And I actually kind of really know that from Sugar Free songs, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Wick. Oh, there it is, right there. Wick. But it doesn't say women's, infants, and children. Thank Holy you. shit! See, look points. at that. I may not know about wrestlers, but yeah. food stamps. Women. Did you know that, Paul? <laughs> no, me neither. Yeah. Shout out to Paul, our sound engineer. Hi, hey. Paul. Yeah. What up? Hey. <laughs> um, so okay. So so you grew up eating healthy then. I did. Unlike yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, it's always been second nature to me. And that whole thing about listening to your body, I mean, with anything, whether it's drugs or alcohol or mental illness, you have to get to a baseline. So telling people that eat a really gnarly diet, like a sad diet, if you will, standard American diet, you can't just say, wait, oh, well, wait, hold on. Did you just throw an acronym out there? You've never heard of that? Sad standard American diet. Yeah. What? That's what it stands for. Um, and it, you can't be like, oh, well, you'd listen to your body because. If, People that listens to listen yeah, to their body true. that eat like shit all the time, Correct. they're gonna be craving fucking donuts and Starbucks and whatever, you know. I know it's weird um, when I see when I see kids like like people just feeding that stuff to their kids. I'm like, oh, yeah, like potato chips and so like like I mean, growing up, we always had those things in my house, right? You know, like you know, Twinkies and cut, like I remember. I don't know if you remember if you guys had these where you grew up, but. Um, we had like one of those hostess stores, like, but it oh was yeah. like an outlet kind of. Yeah. So like, it would be like the stuff that was about to expire, right. and it was super cheap. So we'd go and get like, my mom would be like, "All right, we're going to the hostess store." And we get so excited, we get like honey buns, and Twinkies and cupcakes. Like, uh, what were the ones that were like? They were wafers, but they were chocolate covered. Wafers. And they were by hostess. Oh, my mom chocolate used to get covered those. Chocolate covered wafers. When my parents got divorced, my mom would get that stuff. I don't remember those um. at all. Oh, it's like, like a like woman's like name or like girl's name. Actual wafers? They're like wafers, but they're long. They're like the size of like oh, a Snickers bar, and then they're chocolate all. dipped, uh -huh. and they have something in the middle. Do you know what? I <laughs> sparked his interest. I don't remember anything wafer-like. I oh. remember like I can remember chocodiles and snow. The the snow. What what are they called? The snow. Oh, uh, they were white or pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard the snowballs. I, don't I think, think I've they ever were had called one of those. zingers. Zingers were like yeah. Twinkie, but they had like like another extra frosty yeah. layer on them. All the sugar and yeah, fat you can get. Honey buns were like fucking like right. you would put them in the microwave and you're like, oh. Wasn't there so much demand for Twinkies that they brought them back? I think because they went out like they stopped making them a year or so ago. I remember that and yeah, fat people went fucking crazy. <laughs> <'cause they're> like, <laughs> don't we fuck with food. Bring back our Twinkies <laughs> and it's like okay. Um, yeah, I do vaguely remember that. I remember also not being sad that they were getting rid of Twinkies, but yeah, they brought them back. But like, we grew up with that stuff. I grew up with eating that food, and you know, I was still active, so it kind of worked itself out. And then right. I, I got into fitness and whatever, and then I kind of started paying better attention to it. But like, I see kids now where it's like we know that those things are bad because I feel like the knowledge maybe wasn't as out there as right. it is now back mm -hmm. then, like when I was growing up, but now it is. And people are still giving their kids that stuff. People are still get taking their kids to McDonald's and giving them Starbucks coffee that are like full of sugar. And you're just like, Oh man. Well, I mean, people don't realize that that's just as addicting as nicotine or alcohol, sugar? Or, you know, I mean more so white yeah. sugar is more addicting than cocaine. I mean, it's been proven in labs, you know, white sugar, white sugar is yeah. more addicted than cocaine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A little bit cheaper, too. So, I mean, you literally have to go through a detox. Like, yeah. your mind and body is not going to feel great for a few days. Have you ever done a sugar detox? I mean, I don't really. I'm not a big sugar person, so yeah. I don't really eat that much sugar. Like, I eat a little bit, but, like, yeah. I cut it completely out for, like, just to see if I could do it. And, like... Like, I'll process fruit, too? Everything. Or just process just, fruit? Just okay. everything for, like, like, like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, getting, like, headaches. Yeah. And, like, pain behind the back of my eye. Right. And I was like, well, this is stupid. I know I can do it now, but it's dumb. I mean, and my whole thing is everything in moderation. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. You are what you do 80% of the time. So. But, but you grew up, so that, would, that explains why, like, you're still in good shape and you still eat right and whatever. Because Thanks, Pete. You're welcome. <laughs> Ash is in good shape. Um, <laughs> but that they're just... You were born that way. Not born that way, but like you were, you, you grew up that way. Yeah, I was, I was very, I feel very fortunate to have been brought up in a very, yeah, health conscious yeah. Um, household for sure. And I was also very active. I mean, both my parents were really active. So 
Yeah. What, what were your activities? Starting at like seven years old, I played tennis for about eight hours a day every day. Eight trained. hours? Yeah, I played. I did this thing called Superstars at four in the morning. So it was four to six thirty in the morning, and then I went to school and I would serious? go back to the tennis club and I'd play from like three thirty to seven. This at is night. and this you grew up up north. I grew right. up in Santa Rosa, California. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to seven oh seven. That's a seven oh seven. I was gonna <laughs> yell out the area code just now, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, too short. We know that I know area codes. It's been established on this podcast. He gets around. I mean, I got different hoes in different area codes. You know how we do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you were playing tennis at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, why my parents would want as a seven-year-old. Yeah, I started at sev- at about seven. Dang. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, I mean, I played competitively up until I was about 15 years old. Um, I mean, long story boring. It was a family situation. Yeah. Um, my parents ended up getting divorced. My tennis coach, that was a good friend of my family, um, actually has now been married to my mom for 20 years. So that kind Wait, of hold on. Wait. Yeah. Your mom married your tennis I See, I thought yeah. you were going to be like my tennis coach. Uh, and I then, thought he told you all this. And then night. we started like, you know, he started coming on to me and I was no, like oh no, shit no, no, so no. he actually he ended up hooking up with your mom yeah, oh yeah. Shit. so that was the reason I literally I put down my racket one day and I didn't play up until maybe two years ago uh huh I can't picture you playing tennis now <laughs> just wait Sarah and I are gonna play no you're not yeah Sarah was on this podcast too you know I know I asked her about it today oh really sorry I keep moving away from <laughs> that's okay um okay so I know you, uh, you just finished with you. Got, what what'd you get your thing in like actual nutrition or? Yeah, holistic health practitioner. Holistic health yeah. practitioner. So pra- I can't even say that. Holistic say that ten health times fast. practitioner. <laughs> holistic health practitioner. Okay, I got it. So especially in California, there's a real kind of blurred line of what you can call yourself. Right. I, I mean, for years people have been saying, oh, well, you should on your website because I have an existing website. Um, Conscious Collective. The Conscious Collective. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Pete. Um, I just, I didn't feel right about it without having any formal... Um, school uh-huh. or any kind of credentials. So that's why I did the school, um, the schooling for the past 18 months. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could call myself a nutritionist. Am I a board certified nutritionist or an RN? No, I'm right. not. So I don't really think you'll find myself, you'll find me like calling myself a nutritionist per Got se. Um, a health coach, um, health practitioner, yeah, I'm comfortable with those, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a nutritionist. No. So on your, on your conscious collective, uh, mm-hmm. Do you help people, like, trying to lose weight, trying to gain weight? I've actually, I haven't even put my services up, my list of services up there. Yeah, it's, the Conscious Collective started as just kind of a creative outlet for my friend Rachel and I. Uh Um, Is she hot? But she is hot. I bet. Yeah. I feel like all your friends are hot. (laughs) I mean, depends on your taste. Um, Hot. Hot. But that's the only requirement. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Um, But it started in 2015 as just, yeah, she went to NYU uh, to finish her master's in food studies. And she called me one day and she was like, hey, do you, I think it was kind of part of a project maybe for her for school in one of her classes. And uh, we just kind of started a Google Doc about ideas and names and what we'd want on it. And it just kind of started like that so uh-huh. yeah i haven't even put any of my my services wow. or anything on there yet so so what's on the actual website um just like articles about health and yeah i mean ho- holistic stuff holistic, i mean everything from slow fashion fast fashion environmental issues um clean and eco-friendly living so anything from um you know the products you use in your home what you put on your skin all of that um there's a bunch of herbalism articles that kind of break down different herbs so yeah Kind of the whole Are there any herbs that uh, will help me? Oh no! Perform <laughs> at my <laughs> optimal level. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that at, uh, at a <laughs> like later. horny goat weed or something. Is that like a real? There you thing? go. I mean, I don't know much about that, but I. Believe so, but that's more of like a Chinese medicine thing, I believe. I don't know. Yeah. I've never had to use know. it. I'll do, re- I'll do some research for you, Pete. Just saying. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, so you grew up in Santa Rosa, mm-hmm. which is, I don't know, what, like eight hours from here? About, yeah, if you take the five, you can take the five or 101. Yeah. Um, it's about an hour and a half north of San Francisco. Yeah. So Sonoma County. Yeah. And they have good weed there. They have really good weed. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of in our blood, I feel like, up in Northern California. I mean, that's, that's what I hear. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know where the marijuana that I eat comes from. <laughs> but... 
I mean, a lot of it's Mendocino County, which is north of Sonoma County. Right. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're you're a big like uh, also marijuana advocate. Uh, like like not like I am advocate, yeah. but like you believe in like the uh, the medicinal portion of it, and or you I mean you just like smoking too. I do. I mean, I've I've smoked weed since I was probably 13, 14 years old, uh-huh. and it was illegal um, back then. Th- I guess it was. <laughs> I, <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, th- yeah, it's interesting to see, especially. I mean. If you're from California, you know the NorCal, SoCal kind of rivalry thing. Of course. We hate Giants. And um, Yeah, go Giants. And um, so it, it was interesting to me when I started working down here. Um, I would come down here for work starting at, like, 20 years old for modeling stuff. Oh, yeah, and we're I w- talk about this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I would stay with, with my booker. And I remember one time I was actually telling Vanessa about this um, mm-hmm. the other day. And I was I'd rolled a joint, and I was smoking a joint talking on the phone out front of her house. <laughs> And this guy was walking his dog, and he looked at me, and he, he was like, I'm going to call the cops. And I was like, for what reason? Like, there's literally people doing lines of cocaine down the street, and you're right. going to call the cops on me? For Wait, this is recently? Sitting? This was, no, so this was, I was 20. Tw- I'm okay, aging 20. myself, okay, so this is 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now it's interesting in the past couple of years to see yeah, it's weird, the right? laws change and the same people that were talking shit about you smoking weed are like, hey, so what store do you go to? Yeah, they're or like the what? old people that are inside <laughs> the dispensary now. Right, right. Whenever I go to like MedMen or anywhere for that matter, but I feel like MedMen because of the location, because I live right there by the one on Robertson. Right. Um, shout out to MedMen. You guys are the closest dispensary to me, so I go there a lot. Um, there's always like older people and like I, I feel like, yeah, there's ex- ex- exactly those right. people that were like quick to call the cops or but like at the same time like they were probably doing it when they were younger and then they just grew up and they were like okay no it's illegal I mean, there's now. just so many different right, ways right, right. to look at it like you can get upset about it or not i mean to me as long as people are educated about whatever it is of that course. they're doing then yeah, yeah that's what matters uh, I, wa- I wanted to ask you some questions though um you know you know, you, know, remember, I, you don't you probably remember this but I had you on my other podcast that no one ever listened to <laughs> okay. uh, because we never released it. But on that Thank podcast, God. when we recorded that, I had never eaten an edible before. Oh, really? Yeah, it, I, I remember. I, I vaguely, it, it was, was with Tess. It was me, you, and Tess, okay. yeah. And uh, we, were ta- we were actually talking about relationships, but um, one of the things like that we said was like, we're going to do an episode where I eat an edible and then just watch. Oh, that's right, because transpire because Tess's friend's boyfriend does something like that or something. <sighs> like? don't re- I don't remember. Yeah, but okay. it was like it's all coming back to me now. But then since then, I don't know how long ago that was, but now I eat edibles as you know every night before I go mm-hmm. to sleep. Um, so that's interesting. Pete gets very excited about his uh, his new adventures and in, in well, edible you know, gummy bears. You know, it's so funny. I was I just tweeted this earlier today. Um, like. Have you, s- did I, have, did I show you those, uh, I mean, as you guys know, a big, like, protein bar, protein treat, you know, protein snacks, because. Which kills me, uh, by the way. It kills you? Yeah. I know, we can talk about this, too. we can yeah. talk about this, too, okay. but, you know, it's quick, it's easy, it's protein, I need to feed my muscles, um, and I'm a guy, I'm lazy, so I don't like to make stuff all the time, but these new ones that I discovered are, like, uh, M&M flavored, they're, like, M&Ms, have you seen me eat those? It, it's so. like it, they're, it's made by Muscle Farm. Shout out to Muscle Farm. Uh, th- I forget what they're called. They're called like protein candies or something, but they're like M and M's, and they have protein in them. An M and M doesn't doesn't look like. Well, that. The, the, I'm, I'm po- this is the size of the package. <laughs> okay. So oh, like so there's multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Here. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, so it's like a bag of M and M's, but okay. it's like they're like fucking protein. See, that's the thing is filled. all that shit's geared geared to guys. I feel like you'll never see a girl like eating that. Well, ever. My next point was so. I ate an edible last night, <laughs> and it was, it's not, the, I, mean, it's, it's, I, told, I told you about those cookies that I bought, Yeah. because they were called Big Pete's <laughs> cookies. <Right. laughs> I was like, oh, I got to buy these, I got, it's got my name on it. And uh, they don't kick, they're not as strong as the, the Kiva ones that I like, the Camino ones that yeah. I like, um, but I did start to get the munchies, and so I ate a bag of the Protein Bites uh, candies at like midnight, but didn't remember... So, like, this t- this morning, I was scouring my apartment. I'm like, I know I have one more bag of these fucking candies. And I was, like, Don't searching worry. around. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I ate them last night when I guess I was stoned, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. That's amazing. What did I eat last night? Oh, the granola coconut macro bars. You didn't like the macro bar. No, I, I, don't, I don't like But this. you might like this one because it's, like. I don't like coconut. 
It doesn't really taste like coconut. It tastes like an oatmeal cookie. It's really So why is it called coconut? It's, it's oatmeal plus coconut. I hate coconut. Okay, calm down. I don't like anything coconut. Like zero coconut things. Well, it's not like coconut milky. It's I hate like coconut that. milk. It's fucking disgusting. Coconut water. You can suck you're dicks, getting, dude. It's you're getting gross. gallons of coconut milk yeah, for your it's, birthday. It's stupid. I hate it. Like, you know how people go to Mexico or whatever and they get the, the coconut and they're drinking like, fuck no, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> Give me an orange or a pineapple or like literally anything but a coconut. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So cool. Um, well, we brought you on here because you are probably one of the most uh, decorated people that I know <laughs> oh as, Lord. as far as just like you have just been through so like you're 34 now. 35, I'll be 30 36 in September. Five now, middle-aged. Is that, is that <laughs> no, is? Is no, that it's, middle it's not middle-aged because we live a lot longer now. So what's middle-aged now? 46? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it depends. What, what do you expect to live? I feel like I'm going to be... <laughs> Thanks for the positive reinforcement over there. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I feel like mid-40s is considered middle-aged because okay. I think like 90 is like a easy, especially now, especially like someone like yourself. Who like eats well and whatever. Right. Um, I just feel like life and expectancy for healthy Fingers people. Fingers crossed. I know. On wood, well, I mean, else we barring, can do. <laughs> barring, you know that we missed an, an asteroid and missed Earth like a few days ago by like, like a few thousand miles or something. Like that, no one, like, they didn't even see it until it was very close and it Sounds passed them. Sounds about right. Yeah, that's crazy. Like they see all these things. See, I don't. I wouldn't want to know. Just let this. Let us, I would kind of want to know because I kind of want to fuck some shit up before we were about to go out. Oh, I'd, I don't think I'd want to know. I would just want it, everything to end. Really? Yeah. Have you seen quick. Have you ever seen Melancholia where like they know it's going to end and they kind of like... That's the name of the movie? Melancholia? Yeah. That sounds so depressing. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then they see, then they're like the thing hits and then they just they just watch the end. Or uh, what's, the, uh, what's the other one? Seeking a Friend for the End of the World? Have you seen that one? No. <laughs> oh, these all sound like <laughs> they're, but they're, horribly they're really, depressing movies. They're really funny, too. Like, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World is really Are they good. comedies? They're, like, dark comedies? Seeking a Friend is... Melancholia is a little bit more, like, serious. I want to... I could be wrong, but I feel like Sofia Coppola, Co Coppola directed it. I could be wrong, though. But um, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World is definitely, like a, like, a romantic comedy. How about this? So my mom lives in Green Valley, Arizona, and the nickname Ugh. for Green Valley is called God's Waiting Room. Why? No, jo because it's all old people. Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, how depressing that's is that? Funny. I mean, how depressing is Arizona, period? Well, I know. <laughs> Let's not get started on I that. just got back. Uh, it's not the best. He barely made it back. I know. God. <laughs> uh, but like like I said, you, you've, you've experienced some things. Um, God, I don't even know where to start. So let's just start with, with your modeling first, and I feel like that'll kind of take us into like, <laughs> you started modeling when? Um, well, both my parents, so my mom was a model back in the day in Santa Barbara. Um, 805, shout out. 805. Um, and she also worked at, I forget the modeling agency. I want to say LaBelle. I'm not sure. Mm. It's on State Street. But my dad came in as a photographer and actually didn't uh -huh. want to shoot my mom, wanted to shoot somebody else. I don't know. I forget how the story goes. But um, so they were both kind of you know, model, photographer, whatever. So they did a bunch of Hallmark cards and stuff back in the day, which actually you'll still f see randomly. Like, what do you mean they did? Like, like Hallmark cards. Like, they're like in... She's in a Hallmark card? No, like, they're both in the Hallmark card. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, the ones on the like beach real and, like, people? sunset. Yeah, it's my mom and dad. That's so it's, Yeah, weird. it's really, really funny. Wait, is that what you posted on Instagram the other day? You said what something about, like, I, th I feel like it was your dad. No, that was my dad. That was a 7 and 7 ad. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. 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 Not your so that's you, not my mom. Even it though was it, looks your, like it my was mom. your dad, but not your mom. Right. Okay. Yeah. Seven and seven is that gin? Gin. Seagram's? Seven and seven is like a, yeah. Right. Is what is it? Seven up and ginger ale? Yeah, yeah. Or seven up and gin? Yeah. Something. I'm obviously yeah. not a gin drinker. Um, but wait, what was the original question? So you got into modeling. oh modeling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we did like some car ads. I have an older brother who's five years older. Um. So we always kind of knew people. We would shoot stuff as a family randomly. <laughs> yeah, so weird. Just for, like, extra money, I guess. I don't know. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I kind of got into modeling, I guess, at maybe 12 or 13. Um, shot some photos and sent them to an agency called Stars in San Francisco, and uh -huh. they picked me up, and, yeah. So you started modeling when you were 12? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, don't quote me on the ages. I, don't I mean... <laughs> young, yeah, super young. It was basically at that point anything other than tennis I was good with. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you moved to San Francisco area at some point, yes. I did. Um, 
my first boyfriend and I moved to San Francisco. At, I was 18 and he was 19. Oh, believe, older man. Like your first boyfriend. Yeah, my first boyfriend. Yeah, we met Wait, when we were You didn't young. have your first boyfriend until you were 18? No, I didn't even kiss anybody in my high school. Are Not that he was like the first person I ever slept with, but no, I never dated anybody oh, from high I school. Get it. I okay. never. So yeah. you had other dudes before then. Yeah, but I never like. Yeah, he was my first. Just like hit boyfriend. and quit it, basically. I mean. Yeah. It depended on the. It person. sucks. I hate. You know. What, you know what I hate? This is, uh, and I'll tell you this. Um, if you're not watching, Ashley is very attractive. Um, I couldn't get laid in high school. I was I was a virgin until after high school. I know. I, that's hard for me to believe. I mean, psh, tell me about it. It's hard for me to believe. <laughs> I was trying. Dude. How old did you say you were? Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. But like the thing, that's the thing. It's like where were all these like super hot girls when I was in high school? They were just. I mean, can I ask? But I, w I was seventeen, so I oh, was okay. It's not. I was out of high school. Super young. Because I graduated at seventeen. Okay. Yeah. You graduated early, or um, just just the kind of where your birthday fell? Yeah, it was where my birthday yeah. fell. But I also I started taking. Um, dual credit classes at the junior college yeah, so yeah. i would get out at like 11 or 12. oh that's dope yeah that's smart actually yeah um uh, yeah dude like the hot girls weren't i mean they weren't hooking up with me in high school that's for sure <laughs> and it ha i mean i made up for it since then but like <laughs> as a kid you know when you're trying to build your confidence like it'd be nice if like some of the hot girls would give it up to you that's all i'm saying i mean my thing was is i was always friends with s all the guys that i heard them talking shit about the girls that they would like sleep with or whatever and i was like i'm not gonna be see mine was girls. the opposite <laughs> i was friends because i was on the dance team so i was friends with all the girls and they would complain to me about like all the stuff that their dudes were doing or were you the only guy on the dance team uh no there's one other guy but well actually i take that back there were actually so they were okay so my junior year there was uh, a brother uh four dudes uh two of them were twins and then there was this other dude uh i'm not gonna name his name because uh, I don't know what happened to him, but um, oh, that's not so, good. That sounds well, dark. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it might, it kind of is. Oh, no. uh, I, I just don't know. I don't know. He might okay. be fine. He might be fine. But like okay. my senior year, it was just him and I, um, and then right after high school, he came out. But like that, it was weird because he came out as gay? yeah, yeah, as oh, gay. Oh, oh, okay, got but it. it was weird because like you know, you know, I'm a little bit older than than you are. Mm -hmm. um, there weren't a lot of openly gay kids right. when I was in high school yeah, back then. Um, so it was like a big deal that he came out. Um, and, uh, and actually one of, uh, God, I don't want to talk. One of my, one of my other good friends, um, they were really good friends, him and the guy that came out mm -hmm. and then they had this falling out. And then he went around telling people that one of my friends was at, when he came out, kids he, are so cruel. Yeah. Man. So he went around telling everybody that my friend was gay and it was his whole thing. And like, now I don't, I don't really talk to, I mean, I don't know what happened to the gay dude. But I also don't know, like, I don't really talk to my friend either. I think that happens to all of I mean, right. I had people, like, say shit about me, too, in high school. I mean, luckily right. I had people that would stand up for me, yeah. yeah, but... I feel like people talked shit about me in high school, too, but... I mean, it's... I don't yeah. really know. I had buck teeth in high school. I had bad acne. Um, I was trying to fuck all the girls. <laughs> no one wanted to fuck me, so, I mean, there's probably all kinds of stuff. But I was also conceited, which is weird, because I'm like, how am I conceited if I can't get... I You're don't know. overcompensating? Probably. Yeah. As a high school kid, of course. I was going to bring up the rock story, but we don't want to talk about that. What rock story? You can bring up anything. <laughs> Where you threw the rock. Oh, shit, <laughs> dude. That's, that was in junior high. Oh, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> That's hilarious because I'm, I'm working out. I that know all these things about Pete. Yeah, I'm working, <laughs> out, I'm working out that bit on stage. Okay. So it's not quite ready yet. But long story short, uh, I threw a rock at a girl in junior high. And I was trying to aim for her butt. Ashley knows the story because I told her. Um, I was trying to aim at her butt. <laughs> And I missed, and I hit her because, like, I mean, I played baseball. So I like, was just gonna say, you play, you tried to hit her in the ass, and you hit her but in the it, head. I mean, a rock. I, if it was a baseball, I would have easily hit her in the ass. Okay. But it was a rock, so the trajectory, the angle, you know, physics, whatever, and it sailed. Because I also I threw it sidearm. So when you throw a sidearm, the ball like moves a different way, or the rock in this case. I mean, like whatever I makes you feel better. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I ended up hitting her in the head, gave her a concussion. And one of my other girlfriends saw, and like I denied it. I was like, "No, I, it wasn't me. I saw this black kid do it." But not on a black kid, which is. 
I was like, because I knew that they were like going to be like, okay, it was a black kid. Like, yeah, you know, because there wasn't a, a dick there, move. I'm totally a dick move. Were you in middle school in the 50s? Or? No, <laughs> I know. It, I mean, it was it like, was a, him. it was the 90s, but there weren't a lot of black kids in my school. There were like enough to be like, like it could be anybody, but not like. Well, good thing you might not be here. Now. Well, yeah, I know, but not. But what? So what happened? Oh God! I'll just fucking tell the story. Um, dude, I keep. You know what happens? I keep bringing people on this podcast, and then I'm supposed to be talking to, like, asking them questions, and then like they hit some. Like the last few weeks, I end up telling this some story that I didn't intend to tell <laughs> on my Sorry. own podcast. Um, so, <laughs> so I blame. I said it was a black person, and. Uh, then, like I said, one of my girlfriends, who I thought was my girlfriend, she was like one of my neighbors. Uh, she was really close friends with her, and I was really close with my neighbor. So, like, we were kind of just in that same group. She's like, I saw you. I was like, no, dude, shut the fuck up. She's like, I saw you throw it, Peter. I'm like, shut the fuck up. So I got called to the office, obviously, because this girl told on me. And uh, <laughs> and they said uh, I said that it was a black kid, so they brought out like the school yearbook and asked me to identify the black kid. Oh my God. And I'm just like, oh fuck, dude! Like this is not good. So I can't just incriminate wrongfully accr- incriminate like some random black kid. <laughs> so I just went through the yearbook and I just was like, ah, I just don't recognize. I just it, it all happened so fast. Like I don't know exactly what I said. There's like two people to pick from. <laughs> uh, anyway, long story short. Um, like a day or two later, I got my, we, my mom got a phone call from the vice principal that, you know, the father wanted to have and the, the girl's dad wanted to have. And I liked the girl. Like, I wasn't trying to hit her in the head. I was trying to oh, hit her. Oh, that's right. You liked her, right? I mean, it was just, I mean, we're in junior. Like, we were, like, I, I had known her for, like, a couple of years. And, like, she had a nice butt. And I was just, like, I was really just trying to hit her in the butt to kind of flirt with her, you know, because right. boys do that. Yeah. And I, I hit her in the head on accident. But so the dad wanted to have a meeting. And my mom got, my mom freaked out. And my mom didn't, remark, my mom was like the good mo- parent, like the nurturing, like, you right. know, I had the relationship with my mom. Um, and she was pissed, I remember. And uh, she's like, you know, he's probably going to want to sue us and this and that. And so I remember my dad made me like go to this, this meeting at the junior high. And my dad used to hate that I wore ripped jeans. Like I used to lo- like, I used to like wearing ripped jeans because it was like kind of cool back then, right. you know, and now it's like cool again. But my dad used to hate it. He would make fun of me. Yeah, these have, little, these you. have little holes in them. <laughs> okay. uh, my bottom like this, but like uh, my mom, my dad hated it. But he's like, "Go get your more your most ripped jeans out of the room, so they don't think we have money." I'm like, "All they got to do is drive by our fucking house, and they can tell that we don't have money." Oh too. no! Because like, our house is so small. Like as a kid, it seemed like it was like okay, yeah, like this, it was our first house, or whatever. Right. But then as I got older, I'm like, our house is fucking small. Like my bedroom was smaller than the studio. That's like a lot of easily, places but like, like that, no? so small. I had a, a, a twin bed for like ever. Anyway, it's like uh, the size of a studio apartment that people now pay twenty yeah, five hundred dollars right. yeah, here right. in Los Angeles for. Um, but anyway, so my dad was like, "Yeah, wear your most ripped jeans. Wear an old shirt, so they don't think we have money." And then I went and just denied the whole thing. Of course, I continued to because I knew I knew ultimately it was my word against this girl. So what word. ended up happening? I forget. Nothing. So what's the moral of the story is? <laughs> What happened? That was the end of the st- I mean, the, the moral of the story is, like, I ended up hooking up with that girl in high school, and, like, I wanted to be like, yo, I threw that fucking rock, but, like, I didn't. Oh, that's <laughs> right. You told me that. Okay. <laughs> so it all, it all really worked out. Kind of. Yeah, we didn't get sued, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, why did we bring that story up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we segue. Oh, into because that. I couldn't get laid in high school. Thanks. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe it's because I was throwing rocks at girls. <laughs> I don't know. Girls don't like it when you throw rocks at them. No. Apparently. That's your type. Oh, con- shit. Con- <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's, very, it's, it's like the voice of God coming into my ears. <laughs> I was like, that's your type, concussed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no. Lord. Yeah, I have my own movies. She has, she has like a Me Too story. That's like the only thing that someone can bring up. I mean, who doesn't have a Me Too story? Let's not even get started on that. I mean, nobody has one about me. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> no, no, no. Up. I mean, everybody has felt that way, guy oh. or girl, I yeah, feel yeah. like, you know? I'm like, I'm thinking, about, I'm like, I when, when all that shit came out and everyone was like, oh, like, we're, I'm You like, and every other guy is like, what the fuck, who, what did I do? I'm not worried about <laughs> it. I have zero yeah. to worry about because I can read signs pretty well. And if I'm being honest, most of the times the girls will let me know that, you know, they want to hop on the P train. Got it. <laughs> You and your trains. <laughs> that's what that's what happened with Ashton. That actually didn't sound right at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah! 
I didn't even oh, catch that at and first. And then you're like, that's what happened uh, with Ashton. No, she came on to me, though. I think you kind of told me this. Yeah. I mean, she was she, like, are you going to kiss me or what? She ba- it was just, she was like, are you going to like, do I have to throw myself at you? Or, I cannot uh, see I know, Ashton right? Because she's so all. sweet. And that's why I didn't like try anything with her because she's so sweet and like, she's got the twang and she's just like, I was just, honestly, just like, I mean, you see me at work I and like, that. I'm friends, like, I can be friends with attractive girls. Right. Like, and as a matter of fact, I prefer it because if you're nice to the attractive, not, that's just not, this is not why I'm nice to attractive girls, but like most attractive <laughs> girls have attractive girl friends. Right. They're like, oh, well, he's nice. And then if I ever, I'm like, hey, hook up with your friend, they're like, yeah, but I'm nice anyway. But I'm just you saying, nice I don't try to hit on every single hot girl I meet. So with her, she was just sweet and I just wanted to show her around. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to show her LA. She was just from a small town. And I wanted to show her the city, and I was just being friendly. And then she was like, yo. <laughs> Good game, Pete. Good yeah. Game. <laughs> you know? she, uh, I was like, you have any Mexican in you? <laughs> oh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast got a weird turn. Okay. Yes. So, you, so, you're mod- <laughs> so you, you moved to San Francisco with your boyfriend, your first boyfriend, when you are 18. Yeah. Lived with him for a while. We lived together, yeah, for four and a half years. Okay. Like and yeah. who, who was this person? I mean, not I like you don't have to name names, but like, w- like what did he do? Uh, he's yeah. a pro skateboarder. I was gonna say because you always have like these fascinating like <laughs> people that you used to date. Yeah, and I'm always like, dude. So he was a pro skateboarder. Pro sk- I mean, still is. Still is a pro skateboarder. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. wow! Like still. Still. Yeah. Like, twenty years later, almost. Yeah. That's I mean, crazy. If you're good at what you do. I mean, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Very talented man. Well, boy then, but yeah. Okay. But we met when we were thirteen years old. Right. So we had known. I mean, I had no idea what he did. I actually, I was at, it was called the boy's house because I would always go over and hang out and smoke weed and drink beer and whatever. And Wait, how old were you when you were drinking beer? Uh, 17, 18 years old. I mm. didn't really drink until that point. I mean, I was always, I think that's why I, was, I had such an eclectic group of friends. And yeah. I was always friends with like the gangsters and the, you know, gnarly Mexican chicks that were getting in fights. Like, and, like, like, like my peeps gangsters? I'm, I, like people in the mission? Yourself? Like well, I've the mission San Francisco. When, when I say my in Santa Rosa, like Montgomery Mexi- High School, like Mexicans, I mean, like my peeps. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Santa Rosa has a large like. Hispanic yeah, who's gonna population. fucking work on the farm? Dude. But I mean, then there's hippies and the football players. But everybody, I mean, it's Northern California. Everybody smoked weed, so I think that's yeah. kind of why I just I've always had a very eclectic group of friends. Uh-huh. So um, I don't know where did that come from. I was just asking what he did and whatever. And then it was oh like yeah, so the you were skate- partying with skaters and hanging out with cholas. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, and, uh, you know, I went to the local skate shop, Big Brother, which I think just went out of business or moved. Sad. Shout out to Big Brother Skate Shop. Um, but I came back, and there was this brand called 1984, which was actually off of Van- Von Dutch, which was right kind of oh. when Von Dutch started. Dude, do you remember Von Dutch? And, uh, which I just drove down Melrose, and the Von Dutch stores open again. Yeah, that's so. That? I, I noticed that the other day, too. I was like, wait, I thought you guys didn't exist anymore. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, 1984 was the little skate brand. Um, Shout out to Von Dutch, dude. Von we all Dutch. wanted those hats back <laughs> yeah. in the day. Yeah, the trucker hat. <laughs> um, and I came back and I was like, I had a Thrasher magazine and I was like, Thrasher magazine. Yeah, oh! I was like, hey, these, these pants would look so good on you, blah blah blah. And he smiled and he turned like three pages over and it was him skating for that company. Oh and no And I was way. like, oh shit! Like I was just, I was oblivious. And he was like, you know what else would look good on you? No, hey. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we was we were friends for a long time. Okay. He chased me for years. I just, I wasn't. Oh, you finally, finally, finally got it. Yeah. Okay, that's good yeah. to know. Yeah. Okay, and then. Somehow you ended up with somebody in the Hell's Angels. Are you allowed to talk about <laughs> this? <laughs> um, many, many years later, um, yes, <laughs> I started dating uh, the ex-president of the Hell's Angels. The ex-president of the yeah. Hell's Angels. Now, is he the ex-president because, like, he got arrested? Or is he the ex-president because, like, he got kicked out? Or, like, you get, like, voted out? How does that work? Um, I mean, there's many, there's... Was he the president? Seven sides to every story. Was he the so president <laughs> while you were dating him? No, no, no. He okay. had been out for um, two and a half years. Oh, so he was out years. of the Hells Angels when yeah. you guys dated. Yeah. Got it. But you still kind of hung out and with um, them. I mean, not with the club. No, I mean, the club members are always around certain places. I mean, depending on where you're at. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, in, this is a weird topic. In Los Angeles, it's mainly Vagos and, and Mongols. Um, Hells Angels aren't as prevalent in in los angeles and vagos mongols i know are like my peeps right right like, yeah like mexicans yeah but so are vagos i mean of course hispanic yeah. yeah but i mean it 
that's all. And that's what the show Mayans is based off of. I haven't seen it, but I'm but, guessing yes. And then the Sons of Anarchy is based off of the Hells More Angels. More off of H.A., yeah. H.A. Oh, H.A. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Um, so how many, s how many, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you this. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley will end up like in the gutter. Like, you're not supposed oh to talk Lord. about these things. No, no uh, names, no stories. It's fine. Uh, but that's interesting though. But, but you, now I know you worked at the bicycle shop. That was kind of like motorcycle your life. Motorcycle shop? I've never worked at a bicycle what shop, but a motorcycle shop. Yeah, motorcycle <laughs> shop. <laughs> yeah. And that's where you meet a lot, you're, you met like a lot of like the people that you know as well. Um, yeah, I mean, uh. Yaniv Evan, hi Yaniv. He's the owner and founder of uh, Power Plant Motorcycles. Uh -huh. um, You're wearing the shirt right now. I am. I'm yeah. wearing yeah, half my wardrobe. Thanks. <laughs> um, but we've been friends. He, when I first moved down here, when I was 22, um, I met a girl who ended up dating Yaniv. Introduced me to him, and we just always been friends. We'd been friends for a long, long time, going on like 14 years now. So I've been around the shop like when he first started it. It uh -huh. just start, it first started as a garage. Um, he does custom builds and um, he opened the um, the retail store in the front, which is the face of it's on Melrose. Right. Um, so it started off as a place where they like they fixed bikes, like a garage. Built bikes. I mean he fabricates all uh -huh. the parts and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, so this he opened a store like uh, clothing and, you know, gloves, helmets, all of that with Roland Sands, who's another bike builder. Um, years ago, so I think like 2014, something like that. So I, I mean, I was just always there supporting him, but I didn't actually work at the shop until like 2014, the end of 2014, 2015. Oh, okay. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and when did you stop modeling in all this? Um, I mean, I stopped. I dropped my agency years ago. I mean, that's a whole other long story. Um, I'd lost a bunch of weight due to that kind of a bad relationship and stress. I'm one of those people that just, if I'm stressed out, I lose weight really quickly. Um, since nobody can really see us, I'm 5'8", a little over 5'8". I weigh 128 now. I have for 10 years. I was down to like 107 pounds. You weigh 128? Yeah. Dang, I thought you weighed less. Soft 128. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I've been 128. Like well, you're 5'8"? Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Are you that tall? Yeah. Oh. I used to be a little taller before my back injury. Oh. I thought um, you were going to say, I used to be taller. I used to oh, my God, no. Who was that that sang that? ski -lo. I wish I was a little bit taller. I, I wish, wish I was a baller. baller. I, I wish I had, I had a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're old. Weren't they on, like, a basketball court or something? I don't remember. I remember yeah. the video of him being on, like, on a, on a bench. Okay. And, like, but I don't remember. By the way, videos are these things that they used to show on MTV back in the day. Do they still make music videos? They do, but they're not on MTV uh, anymore. Cable, so. They show them on like YouTube. Oh, got it. And Vivo, is it? Oh, wait. Oh, should I go feed my meter? Yeah. Intermission? We're going to take a quick break really quick. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Good thing I remembered. Huh? No, 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 no. I don't remember where we were, but it's dun, okay. Dun, 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 dun. 
I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Hi, I'm back. She's back. Uh, can we just go? Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? This is the first time I've ever paused, uh, and I don't remember what we were talking about before. <laughs> But it had to be it had to be about you modeling and then lose oh you were like lose talking about uh, when you're under stress. Oh you yeah, because you would ask me when I quit modeling. Um, and then we're talking about how tall you were and blah blah blah. Right. How much you weighed. Um, how least how. How little. How I little weigh. you weighed. Yeah, it's just it's gnarly like what stress and environmental things can do to yeah. you. You know. So you are you like a like that's like in this instance post breakup like you don't eat and that kind of thing. No, it wasn't really that. It's just, and I get it from my mom. If I'm stressed out, I can eat whatever I want, and it just, I, the, it, I don't retain any weight at all. Um, I've been saying yeah, when yeah. I get when that happens to me, I can't physically eat. Like I try, like food just becomes really bland for right. me. Like, for perfect example, like if I'm gonna work out in the morning, I'll have like a bowl of oatmeal. And I remember, like, when I was super depressed, like, I couldn't even fit. And it's not even that much. Like, I yeah, it makes you, like, nauseous. You just can't eat. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, and I know I need to eat, but you just physically can't. It's weird. Right. And also, I mean, then, and it, that's another thing, a reason I have always been interested in, um, in nutrition is I wish I had known then. I mean, I've always been aware, but actually known how, you know, your mental state is attributed to your nutrition. And, I mean, I was eating... Like, so give me an example. Well, I mean, I live, I didn't live off of, but I mean, I ate like Doritos and Top Ramen and whatever. And like you create your body's craving like weird stuff. I was working a lot. I was shooting downtown every morning. So I was doing fit modeling stuff like five, six, seven hours a day. Uh -huh. And I mean, you don't, they don't really give you time to eat. For those like of you guys that eating. don't know uh, what fit modeling is, that's basically uh, like you try on sample sizes you're samples, like but I was, sh I mean, some stuff like what Sarah does, they're not shooting her. They're doing like measurements. Right. This was all shot. It was for um, like on online catalog, uh -huh. basically. So I was changing like three, four hundred times a day, yeah. which is, you don't realize, but that's you're exerting energy. You're burning calories. Oh, yeah. nonstop, and I was eating like a handful of almonds. And I was wondering why, good fat. like it's good fat. <laughs> but I mean, your brain is not functioning properly when right. you're not, you know getting the correct nutrients so um that definitely played a big role and then when i dated um damien with the ptsd stuff he was telling me about um this is the, the guy with the motorcycle no this was damien's in new york yeah the afghanistan the vet oh wait sorry no it's okay um we can say damien's name we can <laughs> damien doesn't mind yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that he was in the he was in the military he was in the navy for 14 years he was yeah. the eod like special ops right um eod so he dismantled dismantled Hurt bombs for a living i guess i've never seen that i don't know <laughs> so you're, that's it. we talked about this but yeah the Hurt Locker, um, basically so he did three tours in afghanistan and he was lucky enough to come back with all of his limbs and yeah. he's very um you should watch that fucking movie because it's Supposed to be like pretty right on. I'll have to. I'll ask him about it. If yeah, that's I mean, well, yeah, ask him. But um, he cut. He do your podcast if he ever comes. Oh, out that'd here. be crazy. No, of course he would. He does yeah. podcasts all the time. And he works out. Yeah, he's a big. Uh, he's actually very fortunate. He works out maybe twice a week for fifteen minutes at a time. And you've seen what he looks like. Fuck that. Dude. But um, fuck Damien. <laughs> There's no such um, thing as only working out fifteen good minutes a. Twice a week, dude. Well, muscle memory. But, um, yeah, I mean, he did used to work out a lot, and he was very, very into jiu-jitsu when I met him. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, that's his thing. But nutrition-wise, and I forget, I wish I, I could remember the name of it. If he was here, he could tell you. Um, but there's he was lucky enough to go to this place this place in Washington where um, it's – I'm not sure exactly what the criteria is, but it's people with, like, severe PTSD from – certain injuries or right. whatever uh -huh. when they're enlisted and um oh i know i know exactly what you're talking about uh, it's like three letters i forget the yeah, name of it because they uh the, the one guy uh that other movie about the sniper american sniper mm -hmm. he goes back and like he's like working with guys oh, that okay. i forget what it's called though yeah so it was interesting to me when damien said that um that one of the first things they did was like a nutrition assessment and to get you to baseline they gave all the guys a Nutribullet and kind of a breakdown on what they should be eating and whatever because once again like I mentioned earlier like you have to start at some baseline in your body you know yeah. to see what 
kind of macro and micronutrients you need for your activity level. And um, their like heightened cortisol is a huge thing that they have to try and bring back down, which really messes you up mm -hmm. um, with weight gain and sleep and, you know. All so what are foods? So. Okay, we can talk about this. So cortisol is a stress uh, hormone. Right. And it causes people to eat more and feel stressed out. And I mean, a, b a bunch of things, gain right. weight, all mm -hmm. these things. I mean, but the gain, the weight gain is also kind of from eating more because of it, right? I mean, there's so many yeah, yeah. things that are involved. So what are some it? foods that people would suggest for someone that has high cortisol levels? I mean, the first, I never want to say you should do this or do that. Everybody's different, right. I feel like. For me, I, the starting with just weeding out processed food is the biggest thing. Yeah. Like, you know, there's, there's so many sayings that are like, eat the rainbow. Well, yeah, it sounds corny, but that's true because you need, if you lived on, yeah, a chicken breast and zucchini is great, but you can't live on that forever because you right. need all of those other, you know, macronutrients. Uh -huh. um, but I would say healthy fats. That's a huge thing. Healthy avocado. fats. Avocado. Like avocado. Nuts, um, nuts salmon, wild caught salmon, nope. sardines. No, nope. um, I'm not a sardine person. I'm not a fucking salmon person <laughs> either. Um, I don't eat fish at all. You know this. Oh, that's but you yeah. don't at all. No. Oh, yeah. I I mean I'm not a big fish person, but like I had salmon last night. I kind of force myself to eat it maybe once every couple of weeks just because it's good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm very particular where it comes from. Um, but We're healthy fat, I feel like that's the the biggest like the most underrated thing people especially with weight loss people especially think oh i have to and cut especially that. for your brain too right. that's why like i mean for me like eating stuff that has like high omega-3 right. is better or not better but just because i'm not going to eat fish mm -hmm. so that or even like i mean fish oil i'll do sometimes flaxseed yeah. like stuff like that right um just to kind of supplement because i will not eat fish yeah yeah no i, gotta, I mean there's definitely other alternatives there's you know i got attacked by a shark when i was like a little kid right and that's what? why i don't eat fish that sounds like a lie. That sounds it's made up. It's totally a lie. But like people always like, watch you, Jaws like you don't eat fish. And I'm like, yeah, I got attacked by a shark. And they're like, oh shit. I'm like, I'm just kidding. Just stop fucking asking me. Oh man. <laughs> so no sushi, like a tuna melt? No. Fuck no. I used I to eat fish. Like growing up. So I mean, sp especially like, you know, being Catholic, you know, during Lent on Fridays, you have to eat fish. Right. Um, so my mom would always make some kind of fish on Fridays during Lent. Um, or we would go to like McDonald's and get like a fillet of fish or something, dude. <laughs> you or know, like whatever works. Yeah, like or I would eat like fish sticks. I used to eat tuna sandwiches and stuff like that. And then as just as I got older, like I just something about the taste of fish just, just disgusts and jam. the smell it just disgusts yeah. me too. No, I get it. But there's also on the flip side of that, there's also foods that I didn't used to eat that I now incorporate into my diet that I love. Like oh, I yeah. hated avocados back in the day. I thought they were so gross. Now like. If they're on sale, because they're not always on sale. If they're on sale, like, I fucking, I'll always get avocado. Like, I'll have avocado with almost everything. Nice. I love it. Uh, I, have, I feel like it's good for my skin, too. It is. It's really good for I your know. skin. I know. Even good topically for your skin. What do you mean? Like, put it on top of my face? Yeah. I'm not going to put avocado on my face, dude. That's no, you can. You can do just, like, a little. I'm just saying, I know you can. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not, not going to. I'm not saying that as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put avocado on my face. Just wait. The next podcast. <laughs> yeah, have, we'll have face, avocado have face, face masks. Face avocado <laughs> guru. Yeah. But I, 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 can, uh, I can attest to like eating well and feeling a certain way. Because right. I mean, you know me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty high on my energy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is because like I eat well. I mean, it's an awareness. It's yeah. learning to eat well is one thing. But like just being aware of, you know, where your food comes from, the process it takes to you know, get it to your table. I mean, all of it kind of slows everything down. And in that process, I feel like it it helps you not only be more aware and conscious of what you're eating, but you kind of eat less. Um, I mean, there's that whole thing. It's like, yeah, you want a cookie? Okay, if you can go to the store and purchase all the ingredients and you make those cookies, eat as many as you want. Guaranteed you're not going to eat an entire tray of cookies right. after four hours of getting there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just, that's how it is. <laughs> right. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I hear people talk about like, uh, like, like you know, Ashton's family. They, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm just gonna break this to you. Uh, people in the middle of the country hunt their own meat. <laughs> right. Um, but and I mean, sometimes they go hunting, but they also, you know, they have cattle. I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, they that's their food though. Right. You know, they are they pick out a cow and then that's their food for like the next you know couple months. But like, they know that where they know where the cow was. They know. 
what right. grain the cow the cow was eating or what hay or she's gonna kill me for get for messing. I'm pretty sure they eat hay. <laughs> Their cows eat hay. I mean, cows eat grass and hay. Gra- and yeah. yeah. Like they don't feed them like corn and shit like that. Like no, that's like the cheapest yeah. thing to feed yeah, yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, but you know they know where the food. But it like. It's also like this is our cow, so it's like all right, we're eating our cow. Which is so <laughs> weird to me how you can raise something. Which I, I mean, I, I know, whatever. I know. It's just such a weird mentality, like raising something and then killing. Like that to me is no different. Damien and I actually had this thing because he eats meat. Uh-huh. He's not a huge meat eater, but he just got a dog from Canine for Warriors, and we were uh, talking about that. He, I said, "How is that any different than eating your dog? Like that's no different." And he said, "He asked me. He said, oh, so." It wouldn't bother you if a restaurant served dog. I said it doesn't bother me any more than them serving a cow really? or a pig. No, I mean it, the whole dog meat thing in China and Korea that has to do with how they're being treated. They're yeah, being yeah. inhumanely treated. Right. Um, same with, I mean, that's a big thing for me. You know, factory farms, cows, yeah, yeah, yeah. chickens, pig, all of that. I mean, it's horrific. Yeah, yeah. Nothing should be treated that way. Yeah. So. Agreed. I agree. <laughs> the look on your face. No, I just, I just prefer to not think about it because it's naive. Well, that's the thing is you compartmentalize yeah, it. It's an, it's naive to be like, oh, well, this cow was probably treated really well until the end, <laughs> like you know, I don't. Right. But I, honestly, I don't eat a ton. I mean, I eat, I have meat in my diet, but it's not like I eat meat all day long. Like I might have one meal with the meat. Well, I that don't know. thing, if the animal thing doesn't bother you, what and you do eat meat, I mean, which if people came to me for advice or guidance or whatever, I mean, it's up to you to eat meat. Just because yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not gonna, yeah, yeah. you know, say, oh no, you shouldn't. Well, that's why I say you're a passive vegan because like other people are like, no, you can't because of this, and then it's like, you right. know, what I mean, and the same thing with me. It's like if people are vegan, I'm like, cool, man, like that's fine. You know, you're yeah. vegan. I eat meat. You I know, think with anything, as long as you're, I mean, whether it's food or your lifestyle habits, as long as you're not hurting anything else, and that can be argued too, well, if you're not vegan, then you are hurting something. But I mean, hurting somebody as it's detrimental to someone else's well-being right. as in a human or whatever it may be, whatever your, you know, your outlook on life is, I, you know, as long as you're a good person, that's what counts. And well, everybody's raised differently. It's debatable it's as different. to whether or not I'm a good person. No, I you're, try, you're a good person. I try my best. But <laughs> I also like some barbecue, so you know, I, I still don't love know. It. It's fucking good, dude. <laughs> and I'm going to Oklahoma tomorrow, and like I'm just thinking about the barbecue I'm gonna have on Thursday, maybe even Wednesday night when I get there. I don't know. There you go. Uh, you know? So Whatever gets you through your it's day. It's so good though. <laughs> barbecue, is But what I would say to you or anybody else is just know where your meat comes from, and that means know what they're being fed yeah, yeah, yeah you know and what antibiotics and stuff are are being pumped into those animals cause right it's not good yeah. <laughs> no I, g- I get that uh, okay yeah i got it so uh what uh what advice would you give someone that's like trying to get their food in order as far as like okay like because i know you don't count calories you're like me you don't count calories mm-hmm. you know have you ever counted calories no, and that's something, I mean, going back to modeling stuff, it's like I, I feel very fortunate that, I mean, genetic-wise, I am kind of lucked out. Yeah. Um, but, no, calorie-wise, I mean, calories from Oreos are totally different than calories of from course. cauliflower. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's Yeah. So what what was the question? What Just like, because, like, you know, I think it's important for people to know calories – if they've never, like, if they have mm-hmm. no idea how much food they're eating every day. Right. Because I feel like most people underestimate how much food they eat. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in, in terms of, like, in this case, like, people that are trying to lose weight, for example. Because that's usually what people come to me and they're like, oh, I want to lose weight or whatever. Right. And I'm like, this, you know. Um, what are you eating? And they have no idea. It's like, well, I think you need to have an idea if that's your goal. But at the same time, like, if you're eating the right things, like like me or like you, like, I eat all day and I eat a lot. Like, if I had to guess, I'd probably eat, like, 3,000 calories every day, but... But you're very, you're really active. I'm super too. active and yeah. they're good calories. I'm not eating 3,000 calories of shit, right. you know, all day long, like Oreos and stuff like that. Um, and I feel great because we talked about, we talked about our, uh, you know, our, our mood and our energy and right. whatever being based, you know, on the foods that we eat. Um, but you know, people always ask me, what should I eat? So you kind of touched on the rainbow, which is what I try to tell people. 
Uh, you can elaborate on a little well, bit. Well, I think, I don't know if you were there, maybe it was Vanessa, but um, somebody came in, this was a couple months ago, and this woman was talking about, oh, I spend, I go to the ranch um, in Malibu for a week every couple months, but which is some, it's like 10 grand for a week. Or What's something. the ranch? Is it like it's a rehab? No, it's like this like holistic kind of retreat oh. thing where there's a chef. I mean, it's beautiful. There's a yeah. chef, there's, you know, an, a Some garden. of those rehab places in Malibu, I'm like, fuck, I want to go there. Yeah, right? Seriously. Um, but the woman was like, yeah, but, you know, I, I really like vodka. And I said, okay, well, how much vodka? Are you? Oh, like every day, you know, I have a couple drinks. I said, well, you realize <laughs> that your liver metabolizes alcohol before it processes any type of calories from food or anything. Oh, really? So that goes back to what would I tell somebody? Education. That's the biggest thing. And that's yeah. what I want to instill in anybody that I take on as a client. I feel like you need to have a really good, you know, knowledge, not really good, but have some knowledge and some interest in, um, in, in why you're eating what you're eating, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And how, how it does affect you and, and all of that, and the simplest thing, I mean, things from the earth, not to sound all hippie-ish no, and course. whatever, you know, things where you can pr you can turn it around and you can read everything on the label, and it's not a laundry list of synthetic, you know, gnarly processed stuff, that's, your body's going to well, receive that's like that thing information. Well, that's like the thing about, like, people going to the grocery store and just not even going into the middle aisles. Right. Like, all the foods that you should be eating are mm -hmm. along the perimeter. You know, so you have right. your produce, you know, all your, all your fruits and vegetables, and then you have, like, you know, if you're into dairy or whatever, right. like, but, mm -hmm. like, you know, stuff like that, um, your meats and all that, like, all that stuff is around the perimeter. Right. And then on the inside is your frozen foods and your box foods and your canned food, and it's, like, right. anything like that, you want to try to stay away from that And stuff. labels, too. I mean, we've done a really good job about with serving sizes and stuff, especially in this country, where people are, like, oh, a can of soup. Okay, well, it's 400 calories. Well, there's two servings right. in there. Yeah, yeah. And the saturated fat is 28 grams of saturated fat, and which is like 80-something like percent 1, of which. 1,600 yeah. sodiums, and so you're like, oh, no wonder. I mean, even a can of Coke. I was with a friend the yeah. other day, and he ordered a Coke at this Italian restaurant, and it was one of the, like, mini Mexican Cokes in the bottle. But they're <laughs> like the, they're like what an actual serving size of Coca-Cola is. And yeah, he yeah. had two of them. And I said, you realize that's a can of, that's one can of Coke. And he's like, yeah, but there's two of them. I was like, yeah, you're not understanding. Yeah, like, yeah. So that was, I mean, then the dude's like 47 years old, and he was just, people just aren't taught to be educated on certain things, yeah. you know? And, and it's crazy now because, like, we have access to so many more things now, and right. there's still, like, it's not that they're... Well, it's ignorance, and it's just being... And people I'm just don't care. Yeah, and it's, it's laziness. It, I mean, yeah. we've become very but lazy. But if you care, that information's all there. Right, absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, tell people where they can find you on social media. Um, the Conscious Collective Mag dot com is my website. Um, Conscious Collective, the Instagram's linked on there. It's kind of weird. It's the underscore Conscious underscore Collective. Uh -huh. um, but my personal Instagram is Ashley A S H L E A H underscore. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that's I don't have Twitter. I don't have Facebook. Yeah, I'm you're not. I, on I stopped media. at MySpace. I think. But every <laughs> once in a while, Ashley will post like some throwback modeling or like you still like will randomly do like a shoot with some I of do, your friends. I do, and it's it's nice, yeah, because I'm able to shoot stuff um, myself um, that like I like shooting because I did a lot of um, bridal and lingerie and swimwear and Macy's and Mervins, all that kind of stuff. But Mervins. Oh yeah, <laughs> those are the the well-paying jobs. Target, yeah. all that shit. Um, but. It's nice to just kind of be myself. I shoot for Harley Davidson every every month or two, um, yeah. which is really nice. And yeah, I shoot for friends, brands, and you know, skate brands or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So follow Ashley because <laughs> she'll post some hot pictures every once in a while. I know you guys are perverts, so go ahead. And the girls will appreciate it because they're I like, mean. oh yeah, she's she's Ashley. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thanks so um, much for having me. If you like the podcast, or if you don't, leave a review on iTunes. Um, share it with your friends. Um, I honestly don't know when you're going to hear this podcast. <laughs> it's never going to air. This is No, it's going to air. Just I'm, just, I'm going on the road for a couple weeks. So I'm, I got a couple episodes that I recorded so that I can keep releasing them while I'm gone. Um, so I don't know what to plug because I don't know when exactly this is going to come out. But I don't know. Just follow me on social media, too. You probably already do. But if you don't, I'm at Peter Sears on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, go to my website, www.petersears.com, for tour dates. 
Um, I'm going to be all over the country coming up over the next few months. So come see me if I'm in a city near you or if I'm in L.A. Um, and thank you very, uh, very much, Ashley, again, for coming Thanks, in. Pete. And this has been the Camera Adds 10 Pounds. We'll see you next time. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs>